Hi, I'm Devin Meyer, and today we're going to we're going to be watercolor painting some flowers. You won't need that much equipment. I have two paintbrushes, a big one and a little one, but you can just have one paintbrush. Also, I have my paints, so you don't need something this big. You can work with a smaller kit. Um, I like this kind because I can squeeze all the colors I like from a tube into these little pans and then I can mix it in this big white area. So if your watercolor doesn't have an area for mixing, get a white plate and that'll help you to have a nice space to make really good color, colorful puddles of paint. You also need a cup of water. Mine's kind of blue because I've been using it. And um, a paper towel to dab up some extra water or to clean your brush. Um, the kind of paper I use is Canson paper. Uh, it's just a little bit more rigid than regular paper, but if all you have is regular paper, try that. It'll get a little wrinkly, but it can still be very beautiful. All right, let's get started. Let's start by looking at some of the beautiful things we can create with watercolor. We can create berries and big flowers and clusters of flowers, um, white daisies using a purple shadow, all kinds of things. I just wanted to show you a variety first. Um, the one beautiful thing watercolor does is it sort of bleeds one color into another. You can see that here. And if you can just relax and let watercolor do its thing, then you're gonna be so happy with the results. Also, it's nice to have contrast, some darker colors with some lighter colors. Um, here's a few more. These are really big with some dark and some light, some white daisies with some purple. See how the watercolor has pooled here? But it, it really looks lovely. And these are some of the flowers we're gonna be working on today. We're gonna to do a couple big flowers, some yellow flowers, some four-leafed, four-petaled flowers, and some berries. And also I'll show you some green leaves, how we can do those. Okay, so when you start painting your flowers, you need a nice big area to mix your watercolors. Watercolors need to have a lot of water to, to do what we need them to do. So I usually have my water very close by. Let me show you that. There's my water. Here's my paints. Um, here's a paper towel. Here's my paper. I like to set myself up for success so that I'm, it makes it easier what I'm doing. So I'm going to get some paint over here and make a nice juicy puddle. All right, once I have a nice juicy puddle, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that. Then I don't have to mix that up when I'm ready to go. Also, your paint's gonna be the strongest right here. And then as you add water, it'll get a little bit lighter. And as you add more water, it gets lighter. So these are different levels of the color. So the first flower we're gonna do is a big, a big one. I'm gonna start with a little bit darker in the middle and I'm just gonna create some petals. So just with my brush, I'm just going to add a few petals like this. Now I like that white space in between. It gives it some air and some freshness. And you don't want everything to be all lined up. You want it kind of staggered. Okay, so now I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I have this lighter paint. I'm just diluting the color. So I'm going to push a little harder and make a little bit bigger petal. Okay. So notice when I lift, it makes a smaller edge. So I could also dilute my paint by just dipping it in the water. And so I'm gonna make another petal here. See how it's getting lighter? And then I wanna make it look sort of ruffly out here. So I'm just kind of pushing and moving my brush. And I'm gonna make that. Okay. Once you lay down the paint, you don't wanna mess with it. You wanna let the pigments just kind of sit. but you can add more color to wet paint. So I'll try to do that right here. See how I added that nice dark spot and it's just gonna blend out. That's called bleeding. I think I'll do that right here too, at the very top of this petal. See how that, it flows out and away. So like that. Now we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back and add some accents in the middle, okay? While that's drying, we're gonna create some berries. So I'm gonna get my brush wet. See how I scrape it off a little bit on the edge of my water? I just wanna get all the pigment out of there. Now I'm gonna start with, my brush is really pretty wet, and I'm gonna scrub 
this is blue. It looks pretty dark, but you'll see when I, I'm scrubbing the blue. And when I make a little pile there, you can see um, it's a nice dark blue. I'm going to add a little bit more water because I want it to be a little bit lighter. So to make some berries, you're just going to make some different size circles, but you want to leave a little white space. That'll make them look shiny. I don't know if you can see that. Let me make a bigger one. So I'm just going to leave a little white space and just kind of make some berries. They don't have to be perfect and you want them to be different sizes too. They can also overlap or meet each other. See how the paint will spread? Watercolor will follow the water. So I'm making that one's a, a little bit big, but that's okay. Maybe that's a huge one. So I'm just making some clusters of berries. All right. So once I have the enough berries like this, then um, maybe I'll add some leaves or a stem. So I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to mix up a green. So I'm going to take some blue, make a pile right here of blue, and then I'm going to rinse again and add some yellow. So I have a, I'll make a nice green. Okay. If you already have green on your palette, you can just use that. Then with a very light hand, I'm going to draw a stem. When I say light hand, I just want to use the tip of my brush. Okay. And look where the green touches the wet paint. It kind of blends around, but that's okay. That's what watercolors do. Okay, so now let's make some leaves. We'll make a couple different kinds of leaves. So I'm constantly rinsing my brush. And I have some green right here that I've already mixed up. I think I'll add some yellow to it, okay? So I'm gonna be using the, my brush. I'm gonna use the tip of the brush to get a sharp point. And this is called the belly of the brush. When I push on that belly, it's going to get wider. All right. So let's start with, um, I'm going to do a stem right here. Okay. Maybe I'll do a few stems. Okay. Then let me get that better in the screen. So now I'm going to use the tip of my brush very lightly, and then I'm going to push and then pull it up, all right? You can always go back in there a little bit if you need to. See how it made different values? There's dark and light and medium. I like that, I think that's really pretty. So I'm gonna start light and then push and then lift it up, all right? Let's, I'm gonna get a little bit more green on there and I'm gonna do one down here at the base. So light, push, so you can overlap. Sometimes they'll bleed into each other and sometimes they won't. You can just add as many leaves as you feel fit. Another kind of leaf you can make. I'm gonna add some yellow. That'll make it a lighter green. Are just like little hearts. Just see how I'm just doing two little strokes like that? Maybe I'll put some little leaves coming around here. Okay. And then let me show you how to make a big leaf. So for this guy, I'm gonna use a darker green. Um, so I'm just mixing up my colors, making sure I have a lot of paint right there. And I'm gonna do half the leaf and then the other half. So I'm gonna put my brush down lightly and kind of wiggle it a little bit. See how I wiggled that, that like the edge of a leaf? Then I'm just gonna get a little water on my brush. And what that'll do, I didn't rinse out all the color. I'm just, this side's gonna be a little bit lighter. Okay, it all bled together. Let's do that again. So I'm gonna mix up some nice heavy color and I'm gonna do half of a leaf and then get it, my brush a little wet and do the other half. Okay, so that just gives it a little variety. Let's do one more down here. Just like in nature, there's no right or wrong. All right, so these yellow flowers, they're almost dry. Let's put some centers in there. I'm gonna get my brown again. There's my brown. See how I use this pan over and over? I just keep building puddles. And I'm gonna put some little dots in there. Now, if it's wet, if it's still a little damp, that's okay. It'll spread a little, but it looks like it wasn't. So then I'm gonna rinse my brush, get some green, 
If you wanted to use a thinner brush, you could make thinner stems, but I wanted to use one brush for this demo. And now I'm gonna add some stems. So very lightly, I'm making some skinny lines, as skinny as possible with this brush. Okay, and now I could make lots of leaves. So these will be long and skinny. Oh, I wanna make that a little sharper, so there. Another thing you can do that's kind of pretty is right where it hits the stem, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark, maybe some blue, and I know that blue will kind of fade into where the leaf is because I know that watercolors follow the water. If this is still wet, I could do it down here. The contrast of dark and light makes for something really beautiful. When you put it all together, you can create as many different flowers as you'd like. But I drew a circle on this piece of paper, and then I just added some big flowers, those little yellow flowers, the square flowers, lots of different leaves. And you could cut that out and glue it onto a card like this. It's just a piece of paper folded in half. Or you can buy these cards at Michael's or at an art store. Um, they're already pre-cut for you. So I could cut that off, cut that out, glue it on there, and write thinking of you, or maybe the person's name, or anything you'd like. Imagine the impact you'll have on that person when they get their homemade card. I think they're gonna really like it. Okay, so we learned how to make several different kinds of flowers and leaves. But the most important thing I want you to think about with watercolor is we have a lot of happy accidents. Watercolor sort of does its own thing. And the sooner that you can just let that go and let it happen, I think the happier you'll be. Sometimes things don't come out the way we planned, but they come out even more beautiful. Also, you can take these skills and make things with them and touch other people's lives. Maybe send someone a card or make a little painting, get a frame. I took the um, all the different flowers that we painted, made them into this circle. Then I wrote something on the inside and pasted it onto this blank card. I got this at like a craft store, but you could just use construction paper or regular paper. Now I can write a, a message and send it to someone and share up their day, and I know that that'll make me happier too. So be fearless with your watercolors. Don't be afraid to try things and explore and see what happens. I'm sure you're gonna love them once you get started. And just go for it, you are an artist. All right, thank you.